Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Today, I'm going to take you through the process that I went through to downsize my retail space. This was not an easy decision for me to make because my booth was quite profitable and I really loved having a large space to decorate. However, because the majority of my merchandise is crafted and upcycled thrift store finds, it has always been a challenge for me to keep it well stocked. And since starting my YouTube channel, it has become downright impossible. There are only so many hours in a day. And so I made the difficult decision to reduce my space to less than half of its previous size. Not only am I going to be showing you this two day process, but I'm also going to be sharing some of my top tips for creating and styling a beautiful space. I hope you'll find these tips helpful, whether you are decorating a retail booth or just a room in your home. Okay, well, let's get started. My first tip is to create a homey, welcoming space that invites customers to come into your booth and look around. I think you do this by creating a space that does in fact look a bit like a room in your home. To do this, I believe that you need to create a good foundation. You need to create some type of solid walls, preferably not pegboard or curtains or just a bunch of furniture pushed up against one another. Then you need to add real furniture. How much will depend on the size of your booth. I would avoid using cheap shelving or storage units intended for a garage or a basement. If you want your merchandise to look high end, it needs to be displayed on beautiful furniture. Because I'm downsizing, I won't have room for as much furniture as I did previously. I have eliminated the large hutch that you saw at the end of my larger booth. Here I am measuring for some new beaded board paneling that I'm going to use to create my new wall. I have pretty limited construction skills, but I could handle this. I merely purchased two four foot by eight foot pieces of paneling and attached them to the studs using wood screws. Once the walls and furniture are in place, you'll want to consider adding softer elements, those things that really add a feel of comfort to your booth. Things like an area rug, throw blankets, pillows, fake flowers and plants. Just like a room, a retail booth also needs a focal point. This is most likely going to be your largest piece of furniture. So you need to figure out what your customers see first when approaching your booth and place your largest piece of furniture there. We all know how important first impressions are. After glancing at your booth, customers will decide in a matter of seconds whether they want to come in for a closer look or not. So make sure they see a beautiful display from the aisle. My booth is at the front of the store and customers see it when they walk in the door. Therefore, I placed my largest piece, the bookshelf, facing the front door. I make sure that the top of the cabinet and every shelf is styled as carefully as I would style a cabinet in my home. Just like I do at home, in my booth, I follow the decorating rule of grouping things in odd numbers, especially in groups of three. When you do this, you want to create a small pyramid with one tall item, one medium item, and one small item. 
This arrangement is very pleasing to the eye. When decorating larger areas, group items together in odd numbers rather than even numbers when possible. Always try to incorporate a variety of texture, whether you are creating a large display or a small vignette at home. Textural variety adds a great deal of visual interest. In this nearly all white display, interest is created through the use of texture, primarily the chicken wire, the caning in the basket, and the dried hydrangeas. Tip number five, I think, is the most important. You need to know what your style is and stick to it. To create beautiful environments, it is so important that you discover what your style is. This will dictate your purchases and your color choices, both in your home and in your booth. I think I know what everyone is thinking right now. You're thinking, I have an eclectic style. I like lots of things. Well, of course this is true. We all like things from a variety of different styles. However, if you buy things for your booth just because you know they'll sell, or you buy things for your home just because you like them without considering style, you are not going to have a cohesive look. There are many advantages to knowing your style. For example, when you bring something new into your space, you'll find that it goes beautifully with the things that you already have. You'll also be able to move things around within your space or even from room to room and everything still looks great together. I think the best benefit of all is that when you buy things in the style that you love, you won't soon tire of them, but instead you'll love them for a very long time. See how I'm struggling with arranging the dinette table? And that's because I don't always follow my own advice. It's West Elm brand and I bought it because I knew that it would sell, but it clearly does not go with my cottage style. I love a lot of color, especially during the spring and summer months, but the eye perceives too many conflicting colors as clutter. Therefore, I have learned that to have a pleasing display, I must limit my color palette to just a few colors. For my booth, I gravitate towards seasonal colors, so for spring, I use pinks, blues, and greens. In contrast, notice the bright red and crisp white of this summer display, or the dark browns and deep oranges of this autumn display. Even though my bookshelf is six feet tall, I have always staged the top of it, and people constantly buy things from there. So don't think that just because they'll have difficulty reaching something that they won't buy it. That's just not true. I created extra shelving by adding little pieces of wood on the side of the bookshelf. I also added two old doors to my side wall to make it easier to display decor up the wall. When you finish decorating your booth or a room at home, I would suggest that you take pictures of the space and really study those pictures. Are there things in the booth or in your room that really don't fit with your style? You'll know which ones they are. They're the things that really stick out like a sore thumb in the picture. When I look at this picture, there are two things that stand out, the pastel conversation hearts and the overly bright green book. But I would never have noticed these if I had not taken a picture. When you are done staging your booth or decorating a room at home, you should have a small pile or perhaps a large pile of things that you did not use. If you don't, then chances are 
you did not edit enough. You probably included some decor that really needs to go. After fully decorating my booth, I decided to move my sign because you couldn't really see the name Canterbury Cottage. It probably wasn't one of my better decisions. Luckily, nothing broke this time. So I know today's video was different than what I usually do. So I would really love to hear from you in the comments whether this is something that you might like to see again or if you would rather I just stick with the crafting videos. And if you're one of those that prefers the crafting videos, then you're going to love next Tuesday's video because I have a great one in store for you. On a recent visit to Wisconsin, I took my niece and nephew to the Goodwill and they each picked out some things that they would like to see me remake in my next video. My niece already has developed a very nice style and ability to see the potential in things. And then there's my sweet nephew. When I tried to steer him away to a different clock with perhaps a bit more potential, he was adamant in his selection of this one, saying that it would be a good challenge for me. He clearly takes after my brother. Well, that's all I have today. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.